everyone welcome to this video in this video we shall be learning about yet another property of compact linear operators in the previous video we have talked about a lemma which tells us about the null spaces of the operators uh, t lambda raised to power n so that means if we were talking about the operators t lambda so we have t lambda raised to power 0 t lambda raised to power 1 t lambda raised to power 2 and so on we keep on doing like this so uh, we had a result on the null spaces of all of these operators now we are talking about the range spaces of all of these operators right so for that we have this lemma it states that whenever we have t from the norm space x to the norm space x uh, defined as the compact linear operator and lambda is given to be a fixed quantity a uh, zero complex number in that case you would say there exist a smallest integer q depending on lambda such that from q, n is equal to q onwards the range is all of them they are equal and moreover if this index q is greater than 0 then the inclusions are all proper so first of all let's have a look what what is exactly this lemma is saying here we are talking about the range spaces so that means whenever we apply this operator on to x whole of the space we have what is called the range space right so this is for this one operator when we apply this on to whole of the space x here uh, we have another range space we have yet another range space and so on like this so we have a range of we have a lot of range spaces defined for each of these operators t lambda raised to power 0 t lambda raised to power 1 t lambda raised to power 2 and so on and moreover uh, we already know a result which states that all of these they are properly contained in each other so that means t lambda raised to power 0 x that is the biggest of the range space it contains the range space t lambda raised to power 1 of x then t lambda raised to power 2 of x and we keep on going like this and there is no end right so they are saying this lemma says uh, we just do not keep on going like this we have a index q where we stop so that means t lambda raised to power q of x so uh, this is the last space which is contained in all other spaces and thereafter after this index we have the space q plus 1 which is equal to this space and uh, from this space onwards t lambda q x all the spaces they are equal to the space t lambda q uh, applied on to the norm space x so this is what the lemma tells us for the proof of this thing let uh, let us again uh, go on parallel proof which we have done in the previous video for the null spaces here uh, we first of all define the notation rn this is defined for the range space t lambda raised to power n of x for this we say that because here we wanted to show that these two spaces they are equal to each other so now we say that suppose if possible both of them they are equal to each other for no s so that means we are saying uh, no such condition exists here right so what does that mean it means that rn plus 1 is a proper subspace of rn for every n so that means this chain is never ending it is keep on going like this it is a proper subspace then because we know this this thing that for a compact linear operator the range spaces all of them are closed and moreover they follow the inclusion which i have already told you right okay so now because all the range spaces are closed parallel to the previous proof we can again apply the reeve lemma here for on to the sequence xn present in the space rn so now we are talking about rn this rn contains rn plus 1 so this is a pair of members in the long chain of range spaces right so we have just uh, considered these two spaces rn and rn plus 1 these two spaces we are saying 
uh, there exists a sequence x n in R n such that the norm of this x n is one, according to Reeves' lemma, and its distance. The distance of x n with x, where what is x? X is some member of R n plus one, right? So the distance here is always greater than equal to some number which is lying between the open interval zero to one. So in this case, we are taking this number to be one by two, right? So let's mark this as equation number one, and this is the result which is obtained through Reeves' lemma parallel to the pre proof. Which we have done in the previous video. Now let us assume that the index m here is less than the index n. Let this thing be true. And moreover, we know we can define t lambda as t minus lambda i. So what is t from here? T is t lambda plus lambda i. So here, what we wanted to do? We wanted to reach at a contradiction. So for that, we have to uh, define Uh, or we have to see what this term uh, is exactly. So we uh, we are creating a contradiction on the compactness for the operator t. So for that uh, we will say that in fact we we shall be proving that this operator is not compact. So which would lead to the contradiction which uh, you you will see in a moment. For that, we are taking this quantity t x n minus t x n. Now you know what is t? T is t lambda plus lambda i. So just substituting the values and separating out the terms, we have these four terms, and then taking this term outside and keeping all other terms inside this bracket, and then marking this term and calling this to be the symbol x. Right. So here also we wanted to show that this x belongs to R n plus one. So let's see. Now this x is composed of minus t lambda x n plus t lambda x n plus lambda x n. So here obviously x n is a member of R n, so lambda x n because lambda is some scalar quantity so multiplied with this x n is all also a member of this R n. X n is a member of R n, no problem in that. If x n is a member of R n, so when we apply t lambda onto it, it would be uh, uh, it would be present in the next space here, right? So we clearly have t lambda x n in the space R n plus one. Now, so we have this term here. Now these two terms are also there in R n plus one. Let's see how the index. Because the index n is greater than m, this is what we have considered previously. So therefore, this thing t lambda of x n plus lambda uh, times x n that is a member of R n, and because R n the index n is greater than m, so R n is clearly a sub uh, subspace of this R m plus one. So therefore, this member is also present in R m plus one. So the linear combination of these three terms is also present in R n plus one. All in all, this term, which is nothing but x, right? This thing is present in R n plus one, right? So we can write t x n, the term t x n minus t x n, this one here, as lambda times x n minus lambda times x, right? So, where what is x? X is whole of this quantity. So here in this case, what is the norm of this quantity? The norm of this quantity is the norm of this quantity, and when you separate out the norm, you know the norm of a x that is equal to the mod of a norm of x, where a is some scalar quantity and x is the vector quantity. So we have the modulus of lambda here and the norm of x m minus x here, and uh, you know what is this thing? This thing is greater than one by two. Why? Because we have established this result in equation one by the way of Reeves' lemma. So using this result here, because uh, lambda is a positive quantity, non-zero positive number, right? So this thing is greater than zero. So that means the norm here. Of t x m minus t x n is greater than zero. However, the sequence x n was bounded. Why? Because 
we have this result again using the Reeves lemma which states that the norm of xn is equal to 1. So, this is a bounded sequence and moreover it is given to us by in the assumption of the lemma that the operator t is compact. If that is so, we can apply the compactness criteria and according to that when t is applied onto this bounded sequence, it would have a convergent subsequence. But according to equation 3, we have a contradiction on this result. So, whatever we have assumed in the starting is incorrect. So, that means uh, we, we had uh, considered earlier that uh, Rf is equal to Rs plus 1 for no s. So, that means no such pair exists in this case. However, we reach at a contradiction. So, that means there exists some number for the index q such that these two spaces they are equal to each other. And next, what do we wanted to prove? For, the, uh, for proving this lemma, we wanted to prove that from the index q onwards, all of these spaces, they are equal to each other. This is what we wanted to prove next. So, that proof is quite simple. Let us have a look here. Now, we wanted to prove that all the, uh, from, from this index onwards, all the spaces, they are equal to each other. So, let me write down this thing. We wanted to prove R q is equal to R q plus 1 that is equal to R q plus 2 that is equal to R q plus 3 and it is equal to R q plus 4 and we keep on doing like this. And this thing is contained in R q minus 1 and contained in, in this fashion only. So, we have a chain of this kind. So, now what is R q according to the Notation, we have T lambda Q of X and what is RQ plus 1? It, it would be T lambda of Q plus 1 of X. Both of them, they are equal to each other. So, I can write this to be T lambda Q of X. This is nothing but T lambda of T lambda of QX. So, that means T lambda is mapping T lambda QX to itself, right? So, uh, if I now take T lambda of Q plus 2 of X, what would be this? This would be T lambda of T lambda of Q plus 1 times X, right? So, it would be T lambda. Now, what is this thing? This thing according to here is equal to T lambda Q of X, T lambda Q of X, right? Which is nothing but T lambda of Q plus 1 of X. So, now you have... Uh, you have this thing that t lambda of q plus 2 of x is, would, would be equal to t lambda raised to the power q plus 1 of x. Both of them, they are equal to each other. So, we have established that r q plus 1 is equal to r q plus 2. In a similar fashion, we can establish that r q plus 3 is equal to r q plus um, 2. And we keep on doing like this. All the spaces after the index q, they are equal to each other. So, this is the result of uh, and proof of this lemma quite a simple proof and uh, an important lemma which we shall be using in order to prove a very important theorem in the next video well that is it for this video thank you for watching